the way in which this particular issue and indeed this bill has been handled, I believe, have been unconstitutional, undemocratic, legally incoherent and utterly disrespectful to the people of Northern Ireland. And yet the government is pressing on with this today with just a derisory one hour's debate. And this despite the fact that abortion is a devolved policy area, that abortion is a hugely controversial issue, despite the shamefully limited scrutiny time which we've already had, and even with the limited original purposes of this bill, the decision to fast track it was considered contentious. The Constitutional Committee of the Lords recently discouraged fast track use in the context of Northern Ireland legislation, except for urgent matters. And this despite the fact that amendments to change the substantive law in relation to abortion and indeed also marriage were outside the scope of the bill and should never have been debated in this place. What are the constitutional implications for the respect of scope for parliamentary bills going forward in the future? Despite the fact, too, that it's well known that these matters are of particular sensitivity in Northern Ireland. Point of order, Mr. Nicholas Bowles. Uh, Mr. Speaker, as you know, I'm a relatively new member, uh, but I thought that the determination of what was or was not in scope was for you, sir, yeah, not for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the honourable gentleman is correct. I am exercising some latitude from the chair. The honourable lady, the member for Congleton, is a very committed parliamentarian, and she is opining on these matters, and I'm very content that she should do so. But I'm equally content to take the opportunity to assert that there is nothing disorderly whatsoever about these proceedings. I have exercised my judgment and responsibility in the way that I think fit in order to facilitate the House. There is nothing, I repeat, nothing unconstitutional or improper about that. And I'm grateful to the Honourable Gentleman. Fiona Bruce. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I thank you for giving me the, op the, the opportunity to place my opinion on the record in this place regarding the way that this bill has been extended beyond what I believe was its original intention, as indeed I spoke to that effect when it was introduced in the House only a few days ago. All of this despite the fact that, as I say, laws in this area are of great importance to the people of Northern Ireland, many of whom celebrate that 100,000 people are alive in Northern Ireland today as a result of the abortion laws there being different from those here. And despite the fact that there has been no consultation with the people of Northern Ireland or their elected representatives on this issue, despite the fact that the democratically elected Northern Ireland uh, members, uh, people voted in a referendum not to change their abortion law in any way as recently as 2016, and as such, Northern Ireland's primary legislation in this area enjoys a more democratic recent sanction than any other part of the UK. And this despite the fact that 100% of Northern Ireland's MPs present voted against attempts to change the abortion law just a few days ago. And finally, despite the fact that there is a letter which I personally had the privilege of delivering to the Prime Minister yesterday from Northern Ireland MPs, peers, MLAs and 17,000 other residents of Northern Ireland, I have a copy here, asking for the withdrawal of this bill, which the Northern Ireland Attorney General has said is unclear and inconsistent with regard to human rights issues. The letter says, and there's a covering note here from Baroness O'Lone, and I pay tribute to her and the speech she made in the other place on this issue. She says, please do not ignore the concerns of so many articulated in a couple of days. These signatures have, have, were ga gathered in just a few days in response to the fast-tracked Northern Ireland Bill. And what is being sought here is a request that the bill is reconsidered. But I understand that what has actually happened following the in, original amendments to this bill on the issue of abortion is that rather than moving to minimise the, the constitutional concerns which were expressed in this place about those and the way that Parliament had treated the people of Northern Ireland just a few days ago, that government representatives actually have met with sponsors of the out-of-scope amendments, and that's my opinion that they are, Mr Speaker, um, and worked with them to enhance the efficacy of their provisions. So much 
for respecting the human rights of the people of Northern Ireland in terms of their freedom of expression, speech and belief. Let them decide on such sensitive issues. We talk here about the importance of not being colonial. But what is this? Is this what new colonialism looks like? I won't be supporting this clause, new clause. I won't be supporting this bill with it in it. Mr Speaker, thank you for giving me the opportunity to say that what the Government should have done was preserve the integrity of the Northern Ireland Act 1998, respected the Sewell Convention and uphold the integrity of this Bill in its intended limited format.